Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel, the central place for all the things art, surface design, and textile design related. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the difference between natural and synthetic fibers. So if you're interested in that, then keep on watching. Also, if you have any questions throughout this video, be sure to drop me a comment and I will get back to you as soon as possible. All right, let's jump in. So I'm just gonna be referring to a few little notes on my phone here, but I will be sure to put the slides on the screen for you as well. Okay, so what is the difference between natural and synthetic fibers? Well, synthetic fibers are of course man-made as opposed to just existing naturally in nature. So they are kind of considered artificial because they don't exist in nature. So one positive to synthetic fibers is that because you are making the fiber itself, um, you know, kind of just chemically, then you have a lot more creativity and control. So one of the major downsides to synthetic fibers is that, of course, they aren't going to be very biodegradable, unlike natural fibers. Um, and sometimes natural fibers can kind of have like a preservative coating, but even with that, um, it's still nowhere near, uh, natural fibers should still disintegrate way faster um, and decompose just over a, a few years or several years as, um, as opposed to like let's think about nylon for example, will take up to 40 years to decompose in a landfill which is crazy. So the upside to this is that your synthetic clothes will last a really long time so I hope you like them. All right, so let's dive into natural fibers first and let's talk about all the qualities of natural fibers. So number one is cotton. So cotton is a really kind of rough raw material and it's very dirty and just full of debris, um, but it needs to be cleaned, combed, and mercerized to make it more um, absorbent when it's actually being used for clothes. And it needs to be more absorbent as well just for the dyeing process. So if you're dyeing cotton a certain color, then it needs to be more absorbent for that reason as well. So cotton really has to go through an extensive process in order to be used for uh, clothes and different consumer goods. Cotton is also a, an extremely absorbent fiber, which is one of the best things about cotton in general. Cotton will absorb moisture in the air around you, and of course, if you are wearing it, it will absorb things like your sweat. <laughs> Absorption is a really important characteristic when you are choosing fibers and cotton is just particularly strong in this area. So the next natural fiber I want to talk to you about today is linen. So linen is a natural fiber that comes from a plant called flax. And compared to cotton, it can be shinier and a bit more lustrous, but it can also be more resistant and it can feel stiff sometimes. So when it comes to apparel, the main problem with linen is that it wrinkles like crazy. So this is like the biggest issue when using linen. Um, so a lot of times you'll see linen blended with something like cotton or polyester to kind of prevent so much wrinkling. Now if you're designing something like a headboard, for example, the wrinkling factor won't matter because it's going to be stretched so tight over the headboard that it's not going to be washed and dried. and you know, you're not going to see any wrinkles. <laughs> so the funny thing with linen is that a lot of tags actually say that it's dry clean only, but it's not. <laughs> it's because of this crazy wrinkling issue that some companies just choose to put dry clean only so that their customers don't get kind of fed up with the garment itself. However, washing your linen clothes in the washing machine is not going to hurt it. Okay, so for number three, let's talk about silk. So silk is a natural fiber that's actually produced by silkworms. Now when you hear that, you probably think, oh yeah, like I think I've heard that before, but sometimes we forget, right? Um, so they create filaments just like spiders do, and those filaments are then processed and then turned into yarns. So the silk fibers are super long, shiny, and flexible, and they do not pill at all, which is lovely. Sorry for all this noise behind me. It's, uh, I'm out here in Railroad Park in Birmingham and there's like cars driving by and of course the railroad and motorcycles and all kinds of noise. All right, now let's jump into our synthetic fibers. Number, uh, number four, the fourth fiber, but the first synthetic fiber is gonna be rayon. Okay, so rayon existed about 100 years ago, fun fact, and it technically comes from wood pulp, ironically enough. So you would almost think that it would be like 
a natural fiber since it comes from wood pulp, but the entire process afterwards is so chemical that it really is considered a synthetic. So it was the very first manufactured fiber and it's one that's something of an in-between between natural and synthetic because it does come from wood pulp. Um, but because it is so processed, it really is considered a synthetic. That is the general consensus within the textile world. <laughs> so rayon was initially created as an alternative to silk long before viscose existed. Um, so now, you will, you'll probably see viscose being more uh, used more frequently as an alternative to silk, but you'll still see rayon plenty as well. Rayon is cheaper than viscose, so it really just depends on kind of the price point. But rayon is, yeah, much, much cheaper, and it was used in linings inside of garments, so you can put the silk outside and the rayon inside to make the garment overall just way more affordable. So number five is nylon. So nylon was invented just before World War II, and people used to say, I got new nylons, which meant I got new tights or stockings. <laughs> so it was really um, kind of an amazing revolutionary fiber at the time uh, because tights are of such a finely knitted uh, fabric and they're made out of nylon. And so it's a very flexible knit. And so the invention is kind of like the way of knitting that finely that would be in a pair of tights or, you know, a pair of nylons. So the invention of knitting that finely plus this new material of nylon was just completely revolutionary and was blowing everybody's minds back in the World War II era. So nylon is strong and it's a good windbreaker material as well. I could probably use some right now because it's a little windy out here. Um, so old raincoats and activewear used to be made in nylon before even better materials uh, and fibers were developed to replace it. But parachutes in World War II were also made out of nylon and that kind of gives you um, an example of like how fast the use of nylon can be. And it's just very strong and resistant, but it has pretty much zero breathability, which is not good when you are wanting to wear it on your body. So number six is of course polyester and polyester is one of the most magical synthetic fibers because there's so many versions of it and it is constantly being redeveloped to do and look new ways and to do have different functionality. Uh, but there are some key properties to polyester that we will dive into here. So in the 50s, polyester became all the rage and um, it's hydrophobic, which means it really doesn't agree with water. <laughs> So it does not retain water, which means that it really doesn't wrinkle. And so that's so amazing for fashion and for the garment industry. Imagine finding a fiber that doesn't wrinkle at all. So it kind of became another fabric revolution in the 1950s. Um, so when you wash your... Hello, train. <laughs> so when you wash your polyester clothes and you take it out of the washing machine, it's kind of already dry. Like it might be wet, but it's not going to retain water very well. So it was initially called the magical wash and wear fabric. So polyester is so strong and flexible that it's actually amazing when it is mixed with other fibers. So a lot of times you will see like a cotton poly blend or um, a wool poly blend or a silk poly blend, you know, all the things. So the problem with polyester is that it does retain oil, however, because it comes from petroleum. So oil and oil um, go together so the fabric itself can become oily. If you have an oil stain spilled on it, it's going to be impossible to get out. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the downfall of polyester. But overall, polyester is one of the most popular fibers to use just because the functionality of it is just really, really great. The worst thing about all synthetic fibers is just they're not biodegradable. So you really want to be careful when you are purchasing um, synthetic fibers and you know you might want to make sure that it's something you're actually going to wear for a really long time that you're not just you know kind of falling for the fast fashion whole uh, consumerism block. That's a whole different video. <laughs> Guys, 
if you're new to my channel, then allow me to introduce myself. I'm Lauren Leslie, and um, I would love to continue hanging out with you a little bit further. So um, if you're on Facebook, then I would so love for you to join the Design Tribe. Um, you do have to submit your email address, but if you're interested in learning more tips about textile design, then I would love to connect with you over there. And on Instagram, you can connect with me over at Lauren Leslie Studio. Um, and of course, on my website, and make sure to look down in the description for a little freebie from me from me and um, if you are interested in becoming a textile designer then make sure to check out my free workshop down below and my masterclass textile start where you learn all about how to become a textile designer in just three months guys I love you so much thank you so much for watching this video I will see you in the next one bye guys <laughs>